Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and TJ here, CRS the commentary, and we will be reviewing TNA's Rebellion. Or Rebellion? Rebellion. Okay, Rebellion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we're going to start off with uh, answering viewers. And correction, yeah, I was thinking, I kept thinking Thunderbolt Patterson because the last person I was hearing, but the learning tree, going to sit under the learning tree, that's, that's Ernie Ladd. That's who was saying that, Ernie Ladd. So my bad. Uh, so we're going to get into Zemo's comment. All right. Let's, let's go and get that done, girl. The worst stuff is why I try to avoid wrestling news sites. They spoil everything and take away from the illusion of wrestling. Yep, Cedra's fault. Ain't my fault. You the one that read it that, that the injury was a work. That's still not my, I didn't publish the shit. You read it. Hey, look, quit with the violence. Quit. I have seen Bryce call matches, and he does have good authority. His voice is ridiculously loud. That's true. But he does not back down from guys like Eddie Kingston and Archer. I have noticed too many mistakes. I haven't. I have not noticed too many mistakes from him. I, yeah, and this is uh, Bryce. We, Bryce, right? Bryce. Okay. What was the, the other one? Uh, Wright or something? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's the other one. It's it's the Young Bucks guy. I don't like. Yeah, the, the 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 one Cornette calls old or something. Yeah, it's him. I was getting confused. My bad. I'm sorry. Let's see. I love Strickland, but it was too soon to place the AEW championship. I kind of feel that way. Joe should have kept the championship and gotten a bigger reign. Seriously, why is it that all my favorite wrestlers get short reigns, but overexposed guys get ridiculously, ridiculously long reigns they do not bloody deserve? I enjoy Will vs. Danielson, but that is because Danielson can have a good great have a good to great match with everyone. Will has been wrestling for years and yet apparently he does not know how to sell properly. I hate to say it, but Will should have gone to WWE. At least he would have actually improved as a wrestler. I hate to criticize, but it annoys me when everyone keeps sucking up to Will, but I just do not see it. Ryder Strong is not officially the most underappreciated appreciated in the wrestling in the world no matter what he does he gets overlooked and criticized you can criticize his facial hair cedra why <laughs> see what i'm saying <laughs> the, the, criticize the man's facial hair good grief and do not lie we all know you love tai chi yep. I, i'm gonna hit you exactly. too zemo <laughs> don't, be hitting, don't be hitting zemo i'm wearing flip-flops <laughs> what he nothing to do with nothing it's got everything to do with everything. Chris needs to go away. Yes, indeed, he does. Okada works so much better as a heel. I agree. Yeah. He just has that face you want to hit. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. got a perfect chav face when he's laughing yeah, at Yeah, he does. He like a little squirrel that just can't wait to cause trouble. Pac is pretty much going nowhere in AEW. He is better off in Noah or TNA or even WWE at this point. Thanks for the great commentary. You yes. are so well. And 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 Roderick Strong's facial hair needs to go. Roderick Strong's facial hair is awesome. Just all, you just saying that to go against me. You know it's not awesome. You know it's not. Okay, look. I'm, <laughs> I, okay, I'll come clean. I'll come clean. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I didn't even notice his facial hair. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. But I mean, okay. I might see it one day. I don't know, but a clean shaven Roderick Strong would by default have to be a baby face. And he he's, like he's, he's screwed up too long. And no, but yeah, but go ahead. He's like some somebody's old asshole dad sitting in the chair being overly critical. All he needs is a damn pipe. Yeah. <laughs> Look, th th this is how they should have done the AEW world title scene. Now, granted. It's been a while. And, yeah. Okay. You know. Homeboy gets his due. He gets the belt. He's new champion. Okay, but Samoa Joe, they, what they should have done was, after his first defense, defended every week on TV against one of the other Baba Ganoushes that worked there. That's what they do. They put him in a small program after that first one and then I mean Dynasty is really nothing it's the first pay-per-view so that should have been a small build up to something 
working against, let's say, I don't know, Christian. Without so much the faction, something's going on. He's got to fight Christian. It's not a law program. It's good. Joe's a baby face. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Something. Work up something. And then have him beat three Baba Ganushas again. Or maybe seven, depending on how long the next pay-per-view is. When it comes to the next pay-per-view, once you get in that last four weeks, that's when Swerve strikes just out the clear blue bile because if he's a if he's a heel he needs to just blast Joe out of nowhere it's like I'm done with Paige I'm done with waiting and I'm done with you wearing my belt simple as that and then they build up from there no stupid stuff all in ring a few promos no contract signing None of that. And then have a long-winded match about the middle of the year. I don't know. All in or whichever one is going to be in London. All in. And that's when Swerve wins the belt. Okay, fine. Swerve wins. Swerve holds it until, let's say, let's see, that'd be what, June, right? Well, all in? Yeah. It's either July or August. July, okay. He can hold it until next year when he loses it to, I don't know. It sucks because there's no one else I'm there, really. I who else? I feel, I feel like they're going to take the belt from him at All In, but who's going to do it? I don't know. They're going to hire somebody else? I don't know. It's going to be either Okada. It's going to be Adam Copeland. Um, Christian Cage. That's about it. And if he's a heel, he can't lose it to MJF because MJF got two levels of unfinished business. So that's what that is. Okay. Oh, I know who it'd be. Who? No, if, 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 it's, if it's Adam Page. No, the other Adam. Cole? By that time, he'd probably be ready to, to wrestle again. You know, he's walking. He's turning the water to wine and getting me ready to give it to him. Finally. I was thinking he could lose it to Adam Cole sometime next year. He should and never Adam, lose it to Adam Cole, but that's what they're going to do. Lose to Adam Cole. Adam is dominant. Adam is beating people. <laughs> he beats Samoa Joe. He beats Swerve Strickland. And every single win has to be a fuck finish. Because then it's like he won, but did he? And then MJF comes in and gets his revenge at the next dynasty. And that's when, because he wins, it's his dynasty. That belt is his dynasty. And then you can get somebody else or some Wardlow chasing him because we know what Wardlow has done. Have you ever heard of a booker ruining their own champion? (laughs) Yes, Tony Khan. That is the craziest shit. He destroyed MJF. Yep. MJF worked hard to work himself up to be a great heel champion, and Tony Khan ruined it with that. Get along. What is it with Tony Khan and friends? Why is it always... I think he needs some friends in life, like some like really good friends. That aren't um, using him for his money. Oh, they ain't gonna find out. This is a capitalist society. And and then maybe he won't, you know, put all this need for friendship and betrayal on the rest of us and we can get some damn quality wrestling. It's always about the <laughs> The friendship stuff is from the, the the independent promotions where they pretty much go with friendships and things like that because that's the social media click stuff. Cause you go on social media, remember what happened with me and that girl? Remember yeah. what happened? It went from we cool, but then I didn't like get on my hands and knees and agree on a topic the way she wanted me to agree with. And then she jumps on me. Her friend jumps on me because I'm picking on her when I'm like literally asking, what is your problem? But that's picking on her because that's how that stuff happens. So they do this stuff in pro wrestling because that's exactly reflecting society. And honestly, Pro wrestling done right reflects society. And if you are seeing this friend stuff and you hate it, you need to see what they're picking on or what they're mimicking, which is society. 
It sucks, but it's true. Okay. That's, it's, I, I know, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, it's but it's all, what it's, it's, it's all lame as hell. You betrayed me. Adam Cole group. Another another friend betrayal. MJF friend betrayal. Yep. Uh, yep. It's like, look, man, just 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 call it all elite and y'all can put it in a in a, a rich person's town. Y'all can stand around drinking wine and plotting the next betrayal. And you can put it on every day and it'll be called a soap opera. And I remember that that um in the Attitude Era, the wrestling is the greatest soap opera in the business or something like that. Uh-huh. Especially so. with WWE because you got like two and a half hours of talking and 30 minutes of wrestling. Yep. Yep. So with that, the 11 minute mark, let's get down to some actual wrestling. Let's get down to the Rebellion review here. Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling's Rebellion. I think that'd be the whole name of it, Partridge in the Pear Tree. So, uh, this dude, DJ Ashbach, comes out, and he's on a metal guitar of some type, and he plays the national anthem. Won't dig in this, and I don't think it was needed, but okay. I liked it. The show opening begins, and it's a very long opening I'm like, I know y'all want to go after the theatrical stuff, but you don't need it on your pay per view or anything else. This ain't, this not, this ain't needed. I didn't mind it because then the the matches they they get through the matches quick. It's not like it's a long thing between every match. So, okay, you got your long shit from the beginning. We got you, you know, like old school bound for glory. The thing We're is, there. I didn't <laughs> understand what it meant. I didn't, I didn't understand what the opening was trying to be about. I can't remember what it was. I just it remember it was kind of long. People walking down the street. Somebody, and you was like, why y'all standing in the street? Get out the street. Oh, I get it. It was all reference to the, the, the final match was going to be Moose versus Nemeth. So Moose is walking with his crew, which is the system, and they're all high on life and looking good. They cross the street, and then Nemeth walks up in his hoodie like he ready to rob him, talking about, fuck the system. It was just a setup for the final. I'm like, the, the so y'all event. cooperatively work with this, and y'all supposed to be enemies, so that makes it look bad then. I'm just saying, don't do stuff like that. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to be getting off that these guys don't like each other. You know? I, uh, I, I just see it a different way. WWE ruined it with their theatrics. So now no, they didn't. Theatrical. No, no, let WWE do what they do. You just don't have to do them. Be better. They are the top of the heap. Don't the matter. The cream of the crop. They are what every wrestling company wants to be. That's what's going to happen. Hey, look. They're the Joneses, and everybody's on the treadmill trying to keep up. The United States government is all right with murdering hundreds of thousands of people through deregulations. Should I go out and murder hundreds of thousands of people, too? No, you won't. But I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about wrestling companies. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Compare and contrast. That's the enemy of bullshit. So they make bullshit every day. They're not looking to to be the enemy of it. They this. I would not do what WWE do. I would be better. WWE got great production, but if they're gonna do stuff like that, then that gives up the game. And it's like, no, it's not that great. That's how I feel about it. You know, be better. Be better. Don't try to be like. Be better. And sometimes low brow is twice as much than highfalutin. AEW could easily outdo WWE. They could easily do it, but they're too stupid. You yeah, know. You're not the same Tony home, and then they may have a chance. I wonder when your phone gonna ring. <laughs> Yeah, what match y'all think that uh, Cedra's phone gonna ring? Because um, <laughs> we gonna we gonna start with this. I think it's the third match. <laughs> the third match. The third match. This started off with a dude. This was by in large great pay per view. Yeah, overall. Yeah. By in large, great damn pay per view. So we got TNA X Division title. Jake something, which I'm just not a fan of that name, but I get it. 
versus the champion, Mustafa Ali. And I'm like, why is it not Mustafa? Or Mustafa, it's Mustafa, okay. Mustafa Ali. So, I took notes on a, a good deal of these matches when I probably shouldn't have. So this ain't gonna happen again, y'all. So listen to it while it's here, cause it's going away. <laughs> uh, Jake racked Ali across the buckle, kicked him up, caught him, and tried to power slam, but was pushed off. First of all, this match got Cedra and I being like, "Oh shit!" with a lot of things. Yeah, that was that was one of them. Ali slid across the ring corner, and when Jake did the same, he was caught into a DDT onto the floor. It was seamless. It was smooth, and that was another. Oh shit! We yeah. messed us up. Ali paced himself, stalking Jake with rolling net breakers. One to the outside where he knocked off the lighting onto the staffer's head. But he also sold that he landed on his back and the ramp without giving up too much that he had to check on the staffer. You can see him kind of checking on him a little bit, but you can't show, oh my God, I messed you up, my bad. Yeah, lights fell on the head area. Yep. Ali tried a flying head scissors, but Jake rolled sideways with it. It was crazy. Stood up with a high angle power bomb. It was crazy. That was amazing. You had to watch that about two or three times. I have <laughs> seen Jake something do that before to someone else in a different show, but the way it look, it looks like a botch that you gotta correct, but no, that's just, and it just amazed me. Mm -hmm. um, Jake does a deadlift from the ground, from the mat that is, he does a deadlift into an Argentine backbreaker and then drops him into shock treatment. That was Abyss's move. Abyss. After Jake was German suplexed on the apron, Ali's uh, Secret Service distracted the ref to let other Secret Service get Jake onto the corner where he took a 450, and, but he kicked out on two. Mm -hmm. They held him they down. They held him down, stretched him out. And held him down, and he hit him with a 450. And it was a good 450. It was, it was pretty. It was pretty. It was perfect. <laughs> Jake mounts a comeback and hits a high angle 180 boss man slam for a two count due to the foot being on the rope. Okay. This is some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Ali blocks a power bomb with a rake to the face and then applies a grapevine crucifix hold and grab a hold of the ropes for the three count. Retaining his belt. That was a good opening match. And honestly, I think that should have... The way that match went, I would have put that second to last. I like Jake something. Jake I like something. I remember he was... Man. I remember when he was puny. I remember he was small too. He, he went out and got all the tips. All the tips. So next we get uh, Rich Swan with AJ Francis versus Joe Hendry. Hendry AI'd Swan and Francis into the opening video, and it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Hendry is all about comedy. Hendry cut a promo on the two about having Hendry Mania, which seemed corny because anything mania cannot be done successfully until three generations of people are dead and no one cares to recall Hulkamania and WrestleMania. <laughs> you can't make up a mania anything. Nope. You can't do it. Stop trying. Leave it alone. It's done. All right, just just don't. The match didn't take long before Swan is put before Swan is pushing Henry's eye into the corner of the steps, and Francis delivers a cheap shot. Not long afterwards, the fans chant Dollar Tree. They haven't stopped that since last time I watched. Henry fights back, and Swan goes after the eye he damaged on the steps. So there's some continuity going on. Mm -hmm. Swan goes to the eye again, gaining a counter from a count from the ref. Hendry turns a guillotine choke into a suplex. That was nice. Uh, Francis low bridges Hendry to the outside. He then gets a chain from one guy, and then this Marryman dude, he stops him, gets in the ring with the fan, with the fan, uh, yeah, with, yeah, uh, getting to the ring with the fan saying, AJ Francis fucked up. And they chanting it, and you can tell they're trying to lower something of the fans' chant through production, but it's not really working. <laughs> then Merriman clotheslines Hendry 
And Swan hits an amazing frog splash for the win. So I, I just gotta say. Yeah, say say all that you got to say they, against they went, Rich Swan. They went through this whole package before showing Rich Swan. And I understand that he's been a champion. The, I believe the heavyweight champion or the, the world champion, whatever they call that former, name belt. Former TNA world champion. The dude looks like he's homeless. Okay. He looks like he's homeless. Then he grabbed, he joined this AJ Francis dude and he looked like he's 50% less homeless because he cut all that facial hair off his head. <laughs> and he's got these freeform locks. I know people like freeform locks when they just grow out your head and let them do what they do. And he need to start over. He need to start over. He looks terrible. And then he's out terrible. And then he's out there wrestling. He's got trunks on or whatever that's got dollar signs all over it. Then he's got on the black capri jeans showing it and they're sagging with us. It's, it's awful. You got to keep pulling them up throughout the match. You got to keep pulling them up throughout the whole match. And it's ugly, ugly Kelly Green kick pads. I just... And the one they call him Dollar Tree, he don't look like a million bucks. No. He looked like one. He's not a million bucks, he's a million cents. He's a, he's a million cents. I, he, he's, got, he's almost got the Raven effect mm-hmm. where you just want to scrub him. If you just put him in a, 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 a tub of Dawn and steamy water and just submerge him and just scrub him, scrub him till it's over. Yeah. I, I, look, I can't disagree. I didn't say shit about his wrestling. He wrestled all right, you know, good job. But he looks like he's homeless. I don't, I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. But okay, don't understand, bitch. Don't understand. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the meme. Okay, so Full Metal Mayhem match is next. Eric Young versus Frankie Kazarian. And Eric Young just don't even look like himself. It looked like old Eric Young's dad. Like, this is like boss level, matured up Eric Young. It's been 20 years. It has. <laughs> he just He's just bossed up looking, he, that's he all. He looks like Mike Bennett's older brother. Yep, or mini Triple H. Yeah, that worked too. Yeah. Um, and I wrote, not a garbage match at all. This wasn't a garbage match. Um, every move meant something and every weapon placement wasn't used until a misdirection to use it. The match ends with the flux capacitor Spanish fly sending Young crashing onto the corner table leg section and splitting him open in the back of the ear. Frankie gets the pin and the doctors check on Eric Young who does eventually get up on his own power. And they had to cut that because you got to get to the next packages and whatnot. And how much of that can you really show? Mm-hmm. So next we get uh, a match that's 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 gonna happen. It's Steve Steve Macklin, Steve Macklin comes to the ring holding a, a TNA contract given given to him by management. He says they gave him everything that he wanted, but one thing: he wants a match right now. So Santino Moreto comes out. It says that Steve is lucky because he signed a new superstar and he makes the match. So now it's Steve Macklin versus Mike Santana and the fans chant, welcome back. This was the best match I've seen from Mike Santana who wins with the rolling lariat. The lariat was missed a few times to build the momentum, uh, well, to build the, mom- the moment when he hits it. And while the fans didn't seem to care for the finisher, they clearly cared about Santana. And that's nice. That 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 is nice. And I like Mike Santana from this because AEW started getting personal, mm-hmm. and it gets to the point you're wasting all this personal stuff on matches that no one cares about. You're breaking up friends. You're trying to do the Shawn Michaels Mario Jannetty angle with everybody you're trying to do the Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage thing with everybody you you can't do that with everybody you know but anyway next we get the tag team title match Speedball Mountain which is Trent Seven and Mike Bailey Speedball Mike Bailey versus the systems Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers 
These these government names, man, I tell you. <laughs> it might not be governments. They sound like governments. They sound like average everyday Joes. They might as well always be all be Joe Joe Schmo one, two through twenty. There is a wrestler named Joe Schmo. Oh goodness. Uh, Speedball Mountain, this, I just kind of put down the most notable things in the match. Speedball Mountain hit a combination spinning back leg thrust kick with a suplex for a two count. The system hit a backpack stun and diving elbow drop for a near fall, stunning the fans. Speedball Mountain, they hit a burning hammer and then shooting star double knee press to the, to the back, but the pin was broken up because dude was going to be pinned on otherwise, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Bailey tries a running apron attack, but was speared out of the air by Myers. Yeah, man. This left Trent Seven in the ring, who tried taking out the champs by scurling Edwards' fingers and attempting the lariat. He was cut short by a lariat by Myers, and then the shining wizard by Edwards before being pinned. And I had to note this: the finger break should not be used, as while it pops and gets the and get grossness out of the fans. It's clearly not real as the defender can't do any injury angle with it for the roster would shrink quickly. Plus, the one hurt is just fine after the match. Yeah, he's using all the fingers. It kills inevitability, you know? So, yeah. It's just not cool. Um, but to say this, it was a good tag match. Mm-hmm. Speedball Mike Bailey has had a lot of long-winded matches, and it looked like you got to kill him to beat him. So it's kind of like maybe he shouldn't have stayed down too long. When you build someone up like you do um, Hiromu to, uh, Takahashi, it's kind of like they shouldn't really be too damaged from certain things for too long because you're built up that they're just almost invincible. So just... Just kind of throwing that out there. So next we get... Oh, one thing. Trent Seven sold really well the whole match. Yes. Trent Seven's always been good for my... You know, this is about my fourth time seeing him wrestle. Two of them in TNA. So... He sold his knee like a champ. Yes. These matches are flying by. I like this. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Look, let me throw it out there. Zemo has been advertising TNA... For the longest. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been wanting to watch it because a couple of times I did watch it, I felt so lonely. But the crowd is live. The crowd is there. They want it. And I'm starting to think maybe they should start testing larger arenas. Just just test it out and see how it go. Um, but I guess it also depends on how many people are you turning away from getting in the building. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you get a... 4,000 seat arena, but you only turn away 50 fans, uh, it's not good enough. Yeah. You know, so next we get the last man standing match Alexander Hammerstone versus Josh Alexander. So, Josh Alexander Hammerstone. Wheel of Fortune, before and after. Yep. Um, okay, so let's get into this, okay? Uh, might as well just tell you the whole damn match. Because I was. This was good until. until. So they start to see. It makes me not even want to go through this because I know how disappointing it got. But but don't go through it. Just be like it was a great match until, and we can go over the until because I got something to say about it. So do you? Okay, I will do it this way. Instead of all my notes that I wrote down, they both went at each other tough. They didn't back down. They suplexed each other into oblivion. It was, it was back and forth. Then they went to the outside where Hammerstone got the advantage first. They got back in the ring, and that's when Hammerstone was still in control, but then it kind of started flopping back and forth. And then Josh Alexander started taking over. He started working the leg outside the ring. He, he, he did well, and... It was good. It was good. Josh Alexander suffered a nasty cut behind the ear because he got attacked by his ear guard. Yep. <laughs> and that, and then when he got hit, that's when the referee started counting. And um, commentary perfectly explains why Josh wears the headgear. 
uh, ear nearly ripped off, needed six months to heal, but came back in four weeks with the headgear so he could wrestle. I just thought he was trying to be like Rick Steiner or Kurt Angle or something. Trying to keep his ear on. Yep. And okay, I got to I got to say this part. Hammerstone did this thing on the apron. I love apron attacks. <laughs> he did this I'm, thing I'm on right the apron. I'm right there. I'm oh, okay. Hammerstone he uh, hit a delayed fallaway slam and then beat on Josh's back and chest, rolling him over until placed against the post, where his head uh, with his head against the post, he had no room to move, and Hammerstone kicked him in the head. This this spot was so entertaining. Because all he could do was take it. And the way the cameraman was positioned, he had a perfect shot. So when you see him club him in the chest, you can hear the concussion. Yep. And then he rolls him over and clubs him in the back. <laughs> There's no way you can see through this. He was beating on this man. <laughs> the cameraman had to be told, hey, look, switch camera angles. Because when he placed his head, when Hammerstone placed Josh's head against the post, they had a perfect view. He could back up, run, and boot kick his head. They switched right the last second. Mm -hmm. Because then you'd be able to see through it. at the Because he had a perfect angle. You would have seen through everything. Um, but after that, the referee starts to count Josh, but he gives up on nine. Hammerstone used an Argentine bat breaker to wear down his opponent and dropped him, on the ref and dropped him for another referee's count. Josh is up at eight. Laughs and catches a bicycle kick. Then Josh Fane's weakened and then snatches the ankle lock and works the leg again, which is good. He went back to what was helping him. You take away the legs of someone who's powerful, you take away you know, 80% of everything that they can do. Um, Hammerstone's in the tree of woe, caught a running crossbody. Count begins. Stone is up on uh, five. Then, got more to go. <sighs> Then Josh Alexander got a bag of thumbtacks. And now I'm mostly turned off to the match. It was really necessary. This is when it turned garbage. It was not necessary. Mm -mm. If he had got a chair, it would have been better. Mm -hmm. Not a table, a chair. It's no DQ, but it shouldn't have been no DQ. I was enjoying this because... They're beating each other down, last man standing, and no weapons needed. Yeah. Other than what they're fighting for. Which I didn't know they was fighting for the headgear. Um, but they on the top rope, they fight up top. Hammerstone delivers a super nightmare pendulum onto the uh, the thumbtacks, and then the count begins. On nine, Josh rolls to the floor where he stands, breaking the count. Josh does another half and half suplex, followed by the butterfly power drive on and the count begins. Hammerstone tries to get, this is out on the ramp. He tries to get up, he tries to get his feet on eight, but then he collapses on nine, and Josh Alexander wins and regains the take-in headgear. Before, scroll back up. Yeah. More. Yeah. Okay, stop. Um, after the part on the outside where Hammerstone kicks his head up against the post, I noticed that the general, the, they had very good pacing. Yes. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of walking around, taunting or anything. Or yes. Josh Jack, I mean, they were trying, it looked like, they, you know, I don't like you, and I'm going to make sure you know it by kicking your ass. That's yep. how they were wrestling. But after that outside uh, part where he kicks his head against the, the post, it slowed down. It had a sense of, to me like, okay, what do we do next? Even if it was planned down to the letter, it was kind of like, what do we do next? And it was almost like, he grabbed the thumbtacks out of, oh, might as well do this. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's what it seemed like to me. And, of course, we're disappointed. It's like, oh, great, thumbtacks. <sighs> you, don't, you don't need thumbtacks. You're big dudes. You're powerful dudes. Get a chair. Get a chair. Slam them on the chair. Make it hard to get up. It's or just go back thing. outside and just blast them into the, the, the ring apron with their back over and over again. Or throw them into the ring post. Throw them into something. Post, post them a few times. Your big burly dudes, you know, use your burliness. Damn, thumbtacks. <laughs> yup, tired of thumbtacks. I'm just tired. So next we get the the knockouts world title match. Oh, Steph man. Delanda versus Jordan Grace. It had potential. It had, but Jordan Grace is short. 
she ain't as ripped as she was last we saw her, which is good. Gives her better form. It's just some things, she needs to get some surgery to fix whatever happened to her face. Um, but uh, this is the stuff that makes me not want to watch wrestling, this match. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say at the end, because I know Zimbo already knows, he already knows why it's a turnoff. But I'm going to go through what I wrote. I have to point out the fact that Steph DeLander eight, eight inches taller than Jordan Grace. Eight. Eight inches taller. This match, if they had just let it be a match. It might have been good. It might have been good. But might have been able to cheer Jordan because she was very much the underdog. <laughs> she had she had her hands full with this woman. Yep. A guy makes a long introduction for a girl named Ash by Elegance. A blonde woman comes out in the dress in the, in the skybox, waves like the mayor's wife, and that's it. And I'm like, oh wow, another blonde girl. Okay. <laughs> that's exactly what we needed in life. Yeah. Hey, anybody got a blonde girl in wrestling? <laughs> No great. If she's great somehow, somebody let me know. Let me know. We need to add one more to our collection. Yeah, we need more blonde girls. I know this is this is my note. This is my grievances here. Grace's matches were stooged to be fully scripted. She did it herself actually, and that just turns me off to her. I guess I'll try to focus on the art of wrestling and not what I know to enjoy this match that Grace will win. That's what I wrote. I don't like the fact that she tried to insult Chris Benoit, who didn't have to script his matches. He wouldn't be able to make it. He couldn't. He couldn't. Be, he wouldn't be able to get over in today's wrestling because you know he doesn't know how to script a whole match. Whoo! Yeah, yeah. I don't know how the fans let her recover from stuff like that, but okay. Yeah, short attention fans. Yeah. You yeah. gotta find something that can't say goldfish brains because goldfish have good good memories and they only count. So maybe mayfly brains. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mayflies only live for about a minute anyway. Um. So Grace tried to suicide her, hits it, and nearly spears her head into the floor. She's fortunate that Steph is much larger, creating too big of a gap from for impact. Because if she was Jordan size. Or any regular woman size, Jordan might have had a broken neck. Um, and I and I'm not blaming Jordan for that. That's not a botch. I'm not. It's just some things that just happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't go back and analyze who messed up or if anyone did at all. I I just didn't. Uh, the good hands is what they're called. They help distract the ref who gets a who gets KO'd by Grace's back fist. Oh my goodness! The ref was laid out. Like a family guy character, laid to the bone. He was, the, he was stretched out on his face, not moving. They tried to get him up and roll him over, and he just laid there, one leg draped over. Yep. Like that dude is out. <laughs> the good hands try to revive the ref while Delanda has the pin. One of the good hands. Now you have to correct me, Cedra, if you remember anything, because I was trying to type all this. Whew. Okay, one of the good hands put on the ref's shirt and starts to count. And the lights go out on three, as like right before three, as if it would have been an official win. Yeah, he just the 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 third shirt don't make you a ref. You have to be selected <laughs> by the booker or some kind of thing to be an official referee to come out and make an official count. Other than that, it's just pageantry. Mm -hmm. PCO is there after a long lights out. He dispatches with the good hands, and Delanda tries. Delanda tries to rekindle their fling because I remember a little bit of that. But PCO attempts to choke slam her, takes him forever, which annoyed me. Then he's attacked from behind by a dude named Khan. Mm -hmm. Grace recovers enough to low blow Khan, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the Brandy Rhodes of TNA come in. Sammy Callahan runs in and then power drives one of the good hands. 
And I was like, Sammy Hank Callahan is not on this card. Good. Because we can get some actual wrestling and not a bunch of stupid shit. And then this stupid shit is going on and Sammy's a part of it. Mm-hmm. And it's all to make Sammy Callahan look like a juggernaut. I'm like, good grief. If you want me to like Sammy Callahan, try to educate me on what's good with his garbage. I, yeah, I haven't seen the thing. He, he, he's, he's gross kissing on folks and, and spitting. Just spitting around. What you, what you spitting for? So, Did you see that? No, because I was typing. He just p- turned his head up and spit into the air and it fell. What the? And it wasn't like water. It was spit. It was gross. Just stupid shit. He feeds Steph to Grace, who hits the Michinoku driver two and gets the pin when a female ref, ref runs in and makes the count. You know, an official referee. No, this sucked. It was just a way to get people on the show and keep a match interesting, which it, it didn't. It didn't. If they had just let the women wrestle, it would have been far more interesting. Instead of, hey, we, we got five dudes who didn't have a match on the show. Just shuttle them out there doing the women's match. That'll work. Yep. Why not just do a mixed tag match and then if Grace's team win, yay. But if they lose, then the other girl gets the title. Just do, I mean, you go garbage it up like this. Just garbage it up all the way. That's how I see it. But this is probably going to start a feud for something. And I, and it's like, you all these, angry, these big angry dudes, why are you pissed off at the women? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So then we get to something that I was enjoying. I don't know about you. Would you did you enjoy this next match? Yeah. Okay. You enjoyed this next match. We get to the total nonstop action impact world heavyweight title match. I'm gonna say, I really wish you just call it heavyweight belt or TNA championship. I wish that everyone would take the word world out of their title because it's not a world title because everyone knows it's not an isolated company. No, no, no. Each and it's company. not defended around the world. Look, you can defend it around the world, but it's defended in-house. Each company is the center of the universe and no other company exists. Yeah, that's about how they treat it. Like like family guy. <laughs> like family guy. <laughs> so this is Nick Nimeth versus the system's moose. And I was like, Nick Nimitz, I was like, okay, that, that's got to be Ryan's brother. Mm-hmm. So his brother, Ryan, um, I, I wrote Ran. <laughs> There's a lot of mistypes in this. Um, his brother, Ryan, and Father Don are in attendance. I was like, that's pretty cool. It was cool, but to for your son and your brother about the challenge for the heavyweight title, they look like they're about to watch him get his teeth scraped. I mean, uh-huh. they, <laughs> they didn't. It's like because they know how the business is. They're watch him get They probably feelings. already know he's gonna, you know, how the match is gonna end. I mean, it, ain't you supposed to be able to fake it? I mean, <laughs> but then again, it's like what's supposed to do? Get up, jump up and down, and holler and who? I mean, they couldn't even smile. I'm not saying Kool Aid Green, but it's like you know, oh, I'm happy to be here. It's like they're sitting at the beach, watching the waves, eating some popcorn, drinking a. Corona or something like that. Just uh, it's a nice moment, and we just chilling. They could have looked like that, but no, it looked like yeah, I gotta, I gotta get my teeth scraped after he does. You know, they looked like they were waiting for oh, a dental the whole, exam. The whole, do I have to be here? <laughs> I, was, I was like, dang, man, y'all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have a pleasant thought. Smile about that. Nah, they, they won't have none of it. <laughs> so Nick has a great babyface intro, but he doesn't even acknowledge his family. What you mean he don't acknowledge? What's he gonna he, do? Run out there? He, they he, won't even. They won't, I don't even think it was at the front row. They were. They were the front row at the corner. He lived with them probably. He he lived, lived, look, 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 look! Everybody who takes the time to say my family's here to support me, when they get out there, they circle the ring, they give the dap to all the all the the the, the, the people. What are they call. Fans. Thank you. I was curious say customers. What is wrong with you? I got all the customers. I thought customers. I thought. I mean, patients. they are customers. I thought patients. They are customers, but in a sense, he, they they give their dap to all the fans, and then when they get to the family, it's like family, you know, quick hugs, and they're smiling, and you know, all. He got to where his family was 
breezed past them and jumped up on the apron. He didn't even get that other side of the fans that were past them. I'm like, what's that? I'm the only one that saw that. What's the point of saying my family's here if you're going to act like they're not there? And I'm like, if y'all are strange, don't fake it. <laughs> they could have stayed at home. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he didn't even acknowledge their existence. Yeah. I'll, I'll get to rest later. Go ahead. <laughs> what, of the family? Yeah. More <laughs> happened with the family? The bad guys, the sister were out there jaw jacking at his family. <laughs> and it was just like, nah. I, <laughs> I didn't see that at all. I was too busy typing. The, the family didn't even react. And Nick never did react either. It's like, y'all got some family issues. Y'all should have left at home. <laughs> This looks bad. <laughs> they could be the brothers Nimeth and then go for tag belts or something. Um, imagine if Mark Briscoe was going for the title and his whole family was out there like this. Just four arms folded <laughs> looking bored. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You'd be like, damn, I don't know if they're happy for him or not. <laughs> he got seven kids. That'd be messed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> you don't have fun? I'm dead. You, you sure you're done tickling yourself? I look, man. It, it, it was a bad look. <laughs> it looked like the family don't give a damn about each other. Anything. I would have been like, we was so I could see, but. Okay. You were typing this stuff. See? So like, <laughs> and typing, it's, it's crazy. I'll be, I'll be typing my little fingers off, man. <laughs> so. Yeah, they don't give a fuck about each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> That's a Kevin Hart reference. Like, <laughs> yeah. I got in the car and started laughing because I realized I didn't give a fuck about my family. I'm like, damn. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Moose, he has an epic champion's entrance. Just the ramp's too short. The ramp is too short, but he looked... He looked good. Yes, he looked good. He looked good wearing that belt. You know, well, I wish he was wearing it. The, the system came out carrying the belt. No, he had the belt oh, on. He had the belt on? Yeah, he had the okay, belt yeah, on. Okay, yeah, he did. Okay. The uh, people came out have their own belts. Their tag yeah, team tag belts. belts. Yeah. I wish the tag belts was, you know, black, though. The, 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 you know? I like so the gold stands out more. The tag belts are red and silver. I'm just saying. What? Red and silver? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, what was I looking at? I don't know. But the, tag, know. The, the, the heavyweight belt is black and gold, and the women's belt is white and gold. But the tag team was silver. I thought it was red and gold. It's red and silver. I just saw red and assumed gold. I mean, okay. You sure? Oh, yeah, I'm fairly sure. Fairly sure? Yeah. Kind of sure? No, I'm sure. You sure? <laughs> so, <laughs> that was just cheap. Okay, look. Okay. So, the, the after that, it was... Stop it. Hit me I with your knee. I am just trying to get... I, 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 get I, I have to keep OJ... Comfortable, damn it! You never, you had to deal with it. No, I wanted to hit you. Just do that. See? Oh, stop! <laughs> Can't you see I'm wearing a white shirt? Go yep. somewhere with yourself. Underwear. Go. Just go. Give up the game. I'm not gonna. <laughs> can't even wear slacks or something. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Good grief! I ain't editing nothing out. I never do. I didn't tell you were naked under underwear. I. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not hired by somebody. I'd be fired right now. <laughs> and probably sued. Okay. If anyone can get past everything they just heard. <laughs> Nick starts off fast with takedowns and punches, but Moose powers out of it until he's low bridged over the rope to spill into the outside. There, Moose hits Snake Eyes on the apron and gets Nick back into the ring. Moose goes for a kick, but Nick backdrops him over the, the ropes onto the ramp. Um, now, I'm not going blow by blow, so it's going to sound like it, but it's not. These are my notes. Nick hits a missile drop kick and then the Mick DDT for a two count. Now, I think that was the first fall attempt of the match, too. Eddie Edwards' wife, I don't know what her name is. Miss Edwards. Yeah, Miss Edwards grabs <laughs> Nick's leg to stop the alleged super kick. And I say alleged at the time. And the ref sees it. The system is then ejected from the ring and the fans are chanting, nah, 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 nah. So they're doing that. Then Nick hits a super kick for a two count. And I noted a super kick that means something. Because other than that, it's a foot jab. It's still a foot jab. What, for him? 
He uses that super kick a lot. He does, but it's for a reason. A reason that didn't work on a moose of a man. It's a, it's, that's a moose of a man, damn it. <laughs> so Nick fights with the sleeper hole. And Moose, well, he drops in the middle of the ring. And the sleepers apply, but Moose fights up. He gets to his feet and then plows Nimeth into the corner a few times trying to break the hole. Then Moose climbs the ropes with, with and he struggled. With, he was struggling to get at ropes. Then falls back onto the mat from the middle rope, breaking the hole. And I had to note, that makes sense. Moose struggled to climb the ropes while being drained of energy. He's in a sleeper. He's getting drained. He's getting tired. And, and, and fatigue is taking over. So it's, so everything is wobbly. He's, he's missing the steps. It all makes sense. He falls back and he crushes him. He crushed him. <laughs> Outside. <laughs> Outside the ring later, Moose sends Nimeth into the steps. Nimeth, uh... Let's see, uh, Nimeth hits a ramp run guillotine ace crusher onto Moose because he jumped off the ramp, hit it on Moose, who's standing on the floor. So that means Moose is down, but Nimeth, he breaks the 10 count just to keep the match going because you can't win the belt on the count out. Mm -hmm. Nick hits a Hamer's net breaker and then a few elbow drops, but he should have gone for the pin. You hit a Hamer's news net breaker, you got to go for the pin. You got to. Um... Nick does nine rapid elbow drops, and he's quick. I mean, it's like you could just Swiss watch that shit. It was beautiful and perfect. And Moose rolls out of the ring where Nimeth comes off the apron for the tenth elbow drop. So I guess Nimeth must do a, a rapid ten real quick or something. Um, let, me, let me scroll down, scroll it down, scroll it down, scroll it down. Okay. Nimeth um, hits a diving, a good diving elbow drop, but for a two count. The match is good. Mm -hmm. I'm into it. I'm watching. I'm trying to type. I'm literally typing this as I'm staring at the screen. So, see, if you see a whole bunch of flubs, that's because I'm typing and watching the screen. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, Moose blocked the super kick, and then he hit a headbutt, and that made us kind of go, oh, shit. Then he hit a sky-high powerbomb. That made us go, oh, shit. That was beautiful. And he, that was a two count. Moose tries a power move, but Nick counters with multiple pinfalls. Everything Moose tried countered into a pinfall. Great technical work right there. Moose hits a tossing release power bomb, got a two count. Moose then hit a power bomb on the ramp that knocked the green light off and broke the camera camera everything went green mm -hmm. and then you could see from another camera angle how the dude is like oh i'm trying to fix this and i don't think i can mm -hmm. <laughs> nimeth lays like a body and barely barely beats the 10 count yeah he was like, like a family guy character too <laughs> he could have put a chalk <laughs> outline around him he was done <laughs> but it made sense yeah moose um miscalculates a middle buckle moonsault that stops nimeth from a super kick spot He's supposed to super kick him as he was floating over, so get him in the head. But Nick had to jump back because it was miscalculated. He wanted Moose wasn't in the right spot. But Nimeth is a fucking professional. He is a professional. I had to say that. And he makes it look like what it was. Moose made a mistake, and so Nimeth took advantage. That was spot on perfect. That to me was the best moment in the whole pay per view. And I know a lot of people might say it's nothing, but when someone can see someone messing up and turn that, turn that into their offense, it keeps it going and it doesn't look phony. I love that. Beautiful. Um, Nimeth, improvising. Improvising. Improvise. Mm -hmm. So Nimeth hits a leaping inverted guillotine H crusher for a two count. And that move is Matt Cardona and a few others finishes. Um, they rest a little bit, but they get up exchanging punches. They look, look pretty good. Um, Nick hits a super kick. That's like the third one he hit. Moose hit a front kick. Nimeth hits a lariat that flips Moose. They made Nimeth look powerful for a second. Nick hits a super kick again, and it rocked Moose before hitting a spear. 
stealing Moose's move and got a two count. A little Oka Diabri. So, Nick tries the sweet chin version, sweet chin music version of the super kick. Moose redirects, hits the ropes, nails the rolling spear for a three count, retaining the TNA world title. I thought that was flawless. I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. After the match, the celebration is interrupted. And then on the screen, wake up. Lights out. Then the lights go out. Again. Commentary had to mention, lights out again. And then there's broken Matt Hardy, who hits the twist of fate on Moose and claims himself as the next challenger. And before I get to Cedra's comment, I can say this. The fans were happy to see Matt Hardy. But they don't care to see Matt Hardy. It seems like they like Moose more than Matt Hardy. And it's almost like they kind of got that dull, quiet thing of, what's wrong with AEW? You ain't like it? <laughs> you know? So we're going to have to just see how this plays out. And then seeing Matt Hardy, he just said, it's like opening the door and seeing rabies. Exactly. She said that she was just making a comment while watching. I just wrote it down. I was like, no, nah, you ain't going to let that one slide. Nope, because that's what it was like. I, it was bad enough when Sammy Callahan showed up. I was like, oh, this dude's just gross. Every time I watch him wrestle, he'd do something gross. And I could just live without that in my life. And then we get to the end of a very good match. Moose got to retain the belt. And who shows up? Fucking Matt Hardy. Retire. Ain't you got enough money? Don't your knees protest enough? Nobody wanted to see you in your haggard hair screaming delete over and over again like some idiot. Oh, it makes my head numb. And it should. Because you get tired of that shit. But I've never seen broken Matt Hardy. I've never seen that, if that's a different version or not. I'm a little stunned at one thing. He didn't look like he had bad knees. I'm a little stunned. We'll just have to see how it work out. You know why he didn't like he had bad knees? Why? Because he had a long ass trench coat that went almost to the floor. You couldn't really see his knees. It was the same color as his pants. All the material flowed together, but the sideways knees are still there. Okay. Hey. He, gonna, he gonna have to prove a whole lot to me because I'm I, I, I shoot I was tired of him before he came to AEW. You, you, you just like the hate, don't you? No, nah, it's not like the hate. It's just... Can you give a little support? He is from North Carolina like us. Yay. Damn. I told y'all she's heartless. I'm, I'm not heartless. Heartless. This is oh. a review. It's not support the folks you don't like. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> uh-uh. Damn, man. What I'm no not going to do. <laughs> What I'm not going to do is act like I like them when I don't. <laughs> this is this type of stuff you get from the Mavison Report on CR Fire Pro. That's on Medium, everybody. It is. It's, it's, yeah, Medium will charge you $5 a month, but it does support other Medium writers and whatnot. So it's a bit of, you know, charity to an extent. Um, you know, so check the description down there. Check out our Medium area and... Uh, Look, that's going to do it for us, all right? So this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on TNA's Rebellion pay-per-view. So with that, y'all be good, be chill, be safe, and we will see you next time.